it's got to be believable, it's got to be interesting, and then it's got to be universal in its appeal, as opposed to only for a certain elite that will really get it, you know, the in crowd. No. <clears throat> Can you expand for a moment just on each of those three and, and what, what that means for each kid? The intelligence, the selectivity of what to play and when to play what is an expression of a certain kind of intelligence. And that inner, deeper understanding of what comprises a reality will make for truthful as well as an interesting expression, as well as a universality to it automatically. Thus, meditation. If <clears throat> I'm functioning in a very superficial way, I, I can't really bring very much depth to a particular play, if you will, or creation. Uh, if I'm only concerned with what is going to be uh, successful in terms of money, uh, then I'll just give people what they want. You know, there's lots of places you can go get fast junk food. <clears throat> it's cheap and it's fast, and and then there are people that are into health food. <clears throat> there are people that are into destructive behavior and people into creative behaviors. Uh, I think if an artist is meditated in the sense in which we've been talking in terms of really questioning and looking you can't help but bring a deeper insight into a piece of material and even if the piece of material is relatively trite mm -hmm. you know it's a sketch right there's a lot of that yeah, yeah no fair enough it can right. be a sketch but within the the boundaries of that sketch can i bring forth something that's deeper you know I mean a comedian is poking fun at stuff in a playful way but if you go deeper <clears throat> a good comedian is bringing a, a deeper insight uh, into humanity into into human behavior uh, so to make it truthful believable interesting and universal means that the individual has to uh, meditate in the sense of questioning themselves and to understand with what instrument do I question and then to stay open as things surface and then question what arises out of that question and then to question that continuously without looking for a conclusion, without looking for an explanation. Because the minute you conclude, or the minute you've explained something, then then the investigation stops. It's but you, you have to, for opening night, though, come to some kind of resolution as a performer. No. I'm not sure that what you mean. In the examination or the inquiry about oneself and about character, you reach points where you say, yeah, that's it for what I'm going to put up on stage for a performance, right? You do reach a, some kind of... Um, uh, resolution or decision about what you're doing with a character for the actual performance. You arrive at places that seem to harmonize with everything else mm -hmm. somehow. I would phrase it that way. You, you, in the investigation, and, and if the if the investigator, if you will. Mm -hmm has looked deeply into things, you can't help it. It has its own mathematical truths mm -hmm. and will reap harmoniously that, that depth of insight that, that the meditator slash artist has mm -hmm. automatically. It's not something that, that they are, have to do. It's something that is unfolding. So by opening night, Choices have been made based on a deep insight into the reality of the play itself, reality of the character, uh, relationships, situation, and so forth. And then, when you're performing it night after night, 
it's still the same approach in terms of discovering what what new insights are going to happen in this evening in relation to the, the structure because it has to be alive. Alive means it has to be in a state of, of moving and evolving, going deeper and deeper and deeper and more and more refined. And any actor will tell you when you've been playing a show for several weeks or a month, it's very different than or when years. you played it, mm -hmm. or years for that matter. Right. It's very, very different than opening night mm -hmm. uh, because it's had time, like a house, it's had time to settle mm -hmm. in. And actors will tell you there's so many subtle nuances that are found just from having done the show over and over and over and over and over again. You begin to begin to discover and appreciate the, the depth of insights that, ha that happen out of doing the show over and over. And not That's just the playwright's insights, but things that the playwright might not have even thought about. No, at that point, at that point, the, the reality of the play is, is, has to be always, but the way in which that reality unfolds every evening is going to be spontaneous. The point of the play has to be maintained. The story, you know, has to has to unfold. But if the process in the rehearsal was a deep investigatory process, if you will, then the performance will be also a deep investigation every evening. It's not a conscious, I'm now going to investigate. It happens as a result of being in the right atmosphere or the right place. Um, I'll use the word psychologically. It's not quite the right word. When you talk about the universal, what does that mean? Does that mean I, as an audience member, identify with your character if you're a villain or you're a hero? Is that what it means to be universal? Yes. That, that everyone will understand the humanity. Uh, it's, the humanity is communicated in some particular way. If I'm a kid from the slums and I go see a play about the upper echelon, uh, I, I should be able to understand something about the humanity and about the, the competitiveness of the very rich the insecurities of the very, very rich, uh, the violence of the very, very rich, which exists for me as a kid growing up in the slums. Uh, except the expression looks a little different, but it's got a universal appeal. I can, I can relate to it, even though I have not experienced what it's like to be the upper rich, so to speak, the elite in that respect.